Imagine a home theater in the mid-1800s, long before movies. Tad Lincoln's Myriopticon is just that. The original tabletop theater displayed 22 scenes of the Civil War accompanied by a script and tickets. Invented by toy maker Milton Bradley, his color lithographs were printed on a long scroll affixed to wooden dowels. With the turn of a hand crank, Tad, the son of Abraham and Mary Lincoln, could present the movie to his audience in the executive mansion. This replica by artist Susan Berkoo depicts only one scene that is a conglomerate of several. It's a peek into how the Civil War fought in our country's fields and towns affected everyone. People of all ages offered sustenance to the war-weary soldiers, many of whom were billeted in their homes. Drummer boys were as young as 10, despite the president forbidding children to be on the battlefields. Families with children dressed in patriotic stars and stripes cheered at political parades. The play of all children, Confederate, Union, and slave was impacted by the war. Tad, dressed in his custom-made military uniform, engaged in war games with his brother Willie. They frequented nearby Mr. Stunce's store for their toy wooden soldiers, drums, and cannons. In the Confederacy, some toys instilled racism in the young. A Civil War era photograph shows a small white girl holding her homemade rag gollywog doll. This anti-black caricature, commercialized after the Civil War, still exists today. The fractured Southern family is epitomized by Mary Lincoln, who despised slavery. Both she and Abraham were born in Kentucky, yet his impoverished parents were abolitionists. Mary's father, Robert Todd, was a wealthy slave owner. Many of her siblings supported, and some even died for, the Confederate cause. Mammy Sally, their surrogate slave mother, was both loved and disrespected in a confusing paradox that was common in slave-owning families. The topsy-turvy doll poignantly exemplifies the complex relationship between master and slave in a topsy-turvy world. The ingenious double identity doll, its dress hiding a black persona and flipping over to a white one, originated in the South in the mid-1800s. Sewn from scraps by the slave mother, the secret under the white character's skirt allowed a measure of safety for her daughter. Topsy and Eva were characters in Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. Dolls may also have been drug smugglers. According to family legends, the dolls Nina and Lucy hid life-saving drugs that were illegally carried by women with their daughters to relatives held in Confederate prisons. The museum housing Nina conducted an x-ray search that revealed a cavity inside the doll's head where quinine or morphine could have been concealed. By the time the Lincolns entered the executive mansion, Eddie, one of their four sons, had died. Tad, named Thomas after his paternal grandfather, was given the nickname because he wiggled like a tadpole when he was a baby. Born with a cleft palate that limited his ability to speak clearly, by the age of 12 he still couldn't read. In addition, the exuberant, intelligent child was allowed to run wild, especially after his brother Willie died the night of their father's second inauguration. After the assassination, the widow Mary took Tad to Europe, where he excelled in school. Tad succumbed to illness at age 18 when residing with his mother in Chicago. The Matthew Brady studio photograph of the president reading a book to his 10-year-old son Tad was widely distributed after the assassination. Tad was 11 when his father died on April 15, 1865. Pa is dead. I can hardly believe that I shall never see him again. I must learn to take care of myself now. Yes, Pa is dead, and I am only Tad Lincoln now. Little Tad, like other little boys, I am not a president's son now. I won't have many presents anymore. This exhibit in the Strange Fates of Lincoln, a portable museum, was created by artist Susan Berku. First, there is the unusual point of view about the bizarre yet true events that surround Abraham Lincoln and his family. Then, there is the unusual medium, a collection of tabletop dioramas that Susan constructed using recycled cardboard, detailed with her drawings and paintings.